Hello everyone, Computer Network Geek here. It's time for our next Windows Server tutorial. Today I'm going to show you the basics of group policy. Okay, to get started here, let's go to Tools, and let's go to Group Policy Management. Now, Group Policy is a fantastic tool. There are literally thousands of options you can set and push out to your workstations and all your computers in your domain or your forest even, or your site, the, the possibilities are close to endless. This is what you're going to use to really get down to the nitty gritty of how to customize how your network is going to behave, how your Windows network is going to behave, I should say. Inside Group Policy Management, we have things called Group Policy Objects. And there's two defaults. There's the default domain policy, which applies to the entire domain. And there's also one for the Domain Controllers OU, and it also has its own group policy object, or GPO. And all your group policy objects will go inside this folder here. And best practice when you're setting up your group policy and you're pushing out your policies and your preferences is to make a new GPO instead of changing the defaults. That way you can go back and change it or even delete it and you can easily get back to the faults if you screw something up. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's right click group policy objects and make a new one. I'm going to title this one Workstations. Uh, let's call it Domain Workstations. Okay. And now what I'll do is I'll link it to the domain itself. So let's link an existing GPO. And there's my Domain Workstations. Click OK. And now you'll see that it's linked here. Now the, do the default domain policy will apply and the Domain Workstation will apply. Now you may have a question here, which of these, if there's conflicts, which of these applies? That's a great question. To ensure that one group policy object takes precedence over another one, you can enforce one. So I'm going to enforce the default domain policy. That way the policies things in there set take precedence over everything else. And I'll set my domain workstations to be different from the default. I'm not going to enforce it this time, just because it's a lab. So let's go into our workstation GPO, and let's click Edit. And this is where all the fun begins. Now there are two main parts to the Group Policy Management Editor. Computer Configuration and User Configuration. And basically what these do is they apply to two different parts of the registry. The Computer Configuration is going to apply to HKOM, or HK Local Machine. And User Configuration is going to apply to HK CU or H key current user. If you know anything about the registry, that'll make uh, more sense. Anyway, this will apply to the computer when it boots up, and this will apply to users when they log in. So you can even have group policy apply to one specific group, one specific user. You can make it as anything you like, basically. Or you can apply it just to the computer as a whole. And inside here, we have policies. We have software settings, so if you want to push out software packages to your workstations, you can easily do that here. Windows settings, this is where you're going to spend a lot of your time. That as well as administrative templates. You can set DNS policies here. Scripts, startup shutdown. If you want any kind of script to run when a computer is first booted, or when a user logs on, you would do that here. It's also in user configuration, as you can see there. Security settings, this is a big one you're going to be looking at. Here you can set password policies, account lockout policies in Kerberos. Local, you can do auditing. I usually don't set auditing on my labs just because it takes so much uh, resources to do, especially on your disk. User rights, there's a lot in here. You can change whether a user can shut down the system or not. You can change um, how to log in as a service, as a batch job. There is a ton of stuff in here. You can deny log. You can deny log on from a network. There's a lot of great things in here. Security options. You'll be able to set things like account settings, domain member settings, interactive log on. So, for example, if you don't want to require control or delete, I don't recommend that. But if you didn't you would go in and set this here and if you want to set a policy it's really easy you just double click it 
you define it, and then you would enable it. I'm not going to enable it because I want to keep that. That's one example of how you would set that. And if you scroll down, a big one you're going to look at also is UAC. You can set all your user account control options here. Further down, you can choose what services boot into the system, or what services start when you boot into, into a system. You can set those here. For example, if you wanted to use App Blocker, you'd have to have the application identity service run automatically, and you could set that here. You could define, disable, manual, automatic. So you can have complete and utter control over how your systems function and work. You can change the registry from here. You can add keys. You can change how NTFS permissions work and file system. Again, the possibilities are endless. And it would take ages, literally ages, to go through every single one of these. And in future videos, I will cover some of these more in depth, the ones that you use more often, like security options, user rights assignments, system services, things like that. That'll be in some future videos, though. For now, let me just show you what happens when you push out a policy to a workstation. So let's select one. Under administrative templates, you can control things like the control panel, network settings, printers, server, start menu and taskbar. You can change how the start menu and the taskbar are function. You can even hide the taskbar entirely. Windows components, you can set things like group uh, file history, how they work here, home groups, if you use those in your domain, which is probably not likely. File Explorer, Fire History. So it, it, basically everything that's a Windows component is going to be in here. Windows Update. If you want to use WSUS, for example, you'd have to go into Windows Update and point it to a specific entrant here. And that's what you would do. And we'll cover that as well. There is a lot of stuff here, and we were going to, we're going to spend a lot of time in group policy. Okay, what I want to show you next is I'm going to show you what happens when you push out a policy to a workstation. So let's do a classic. Let's disable the control panel. Let's go down to user configuration, administrative templates, go to control panel, which I already have it open. And what you'll do is you'll go to prohibit access to control panel and PC settings. And of course, PC settings is only in Windows 8 and 8.1. So what you'll do when you find the policy you want to enable, you'll double click it. Then you can choose not configured, enable or disable. And all the options pertaining to those are over here in this window here. Now I've already enabled it. I haven't pushed out to my workstation yet. Let's click OK. And it takes about 90 minutes or so for group policy to push out to workstations. But you can update group policy on any computer instantly. So let's, let's do that. Let's right click and start a command prompt. Ah, and take notice here. We know that this workstation is a member of the domain because under domain we have NetLab and it's prompting me for administrator credentials so that we can elevate. So let's go ahead and do that. I can't even run the command prompt without giving administrator username and password. So domains really lock things down as far as security goes. Okay, so we've got our command prompt, and what you want to type in is GPU update slash force. And that will update group policy. And now, since it's user configuration, we'll actually have to log out for this to take effect. So let's go ahead and do that. Sign out. Let's go ahead and sign back in. And now when we go to open the control panel, we should be automatically denied because we set that policy in, in group policy. <laughs> so let's try and open the control panel. And there we go. This operation has been canceled due to restrictions and effect on this computer. And those restrictions were set over here in our group policy. So that just gives you an idea of the kind of control you can have over the computers in your domain, even in the users in your domain. And like I said before, we will go into group policy, specifically different parts of it, in a lot more detail in some future videos. But this is just to give you a general idea how it works, how it's pushed out to the workstations, the general functions of it. Okay, that about wraps things up for this video. Uh, next time, as I mentioned already, we'll dive into some more group policy, advanced group policy if you like. And uh, also thinking about checking out some Windows Firewall Advanced Security to help you out with the Security Plus some. So we'll, we'll dive into that some more too. There's definitely more videos on the way, so if you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. 
And also be sure to check out my forum and my podcast, and both links for those are on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.